All right, for today's video review, we're gonna be taking a look at Transformers Bot Bots Series 6 Raceroni and Out of Controller sets. Uh, yeah, we finally got Bot Bots Series 6 after all this time. This is a uh, pretty exciting in in some regards, and um, I gotta say right off the bat kind of disappointing in, uh, in some other regards in terms of how these sets actually turned out. So previously, the, the Bot Bots line, we've never had anything like this before. Every single Bot Bot set before this has always been, you know, just sets of Bot Bots, simple Bot Bots. Um, we've never had anything like actually, you know, extra vehicles to go along with them. So it was a, a pretty exciting concept when they uh, when they announced it. In terms of the execution of it, mm, I'm a little bit on the fence about how I feel about these. They're not great, if I'm being honest. Um, now, uh, I ordered these, I pre-ordered these on Amazon uh, when they announced them. And on Amazon, they sell them as one set. But in retail, I'm pretty sure you can actually pick these up as separate sets, like either the uh, the Raceroni or the Outer Controller. Um, and each set comes with four different bot bots here. I've got them kind of split up here. Um, so I, I'm going to spend most of the video kind of talking about the vehicles themselves. I will do individual reviews for each of these guys, but, you know, they come with the sets, so I figure I got to show them off here a little bit. I wanted to start off in robot mode just because I, I cut my fingernails yesterday and you do not want to watch a video of me struggling to transform uh, <laughs> eight bot bots to robot mode with freshly cut nails. I just think that would be miserable for both of us. Uh, so... We're going to start off in robot mode and uh, we're going to briefly look at the uh, the guys that they actually come with first before we spend the majority of the video kind of looking at the vehicles themselves. So like I mentioned, each set comes with four bot bots here. Um, a, a good portion of them are repaints in a, in the Raceroni set. This guy is a repaint, this guy is a repaint, and this guy is a repaint, and this one is a new mold. Uh, and in the, uh, the uh, Outer Controller set, these two in the front are new and these two in the back are repaints. Um, what's kind of unfortunate is uh, there isn't actually like a full BotBot Bot Series 6 checklist included in this set at all. Uh, and there's not instructions for how you're supposed to properly transform the actual bot bots themselves. They do have little instruction sheets that show off how to transform the vehicles, but not the bot bots themselves, which, you know, they're bot bots, so they're not like overly complicated. And again, five eighths of them are molds that we've seen before, so I know how to transform those ones, but still. I'm not in love with that. And also like, you know, their names are listed on the back of the box, but you can only kind of figure out which is which through context clues. And I, I sort of feel like, you know, you should sell the product as, assuming that the person who's buying it isn't necessarily going to buy another set that has like a checklist. So like, it just feels a little bit I don't know, like it's not taken super seriously if you're just including these guys and not like clearly showing you how to transform them or defining their names or anything. Like it just seems, I don't know, it, it seems a little, I don't know, half-baked, I guess. Uh, but given the uh, the clues on the back of the box, we can pretty easily figure out which is which. Um, these two, who originally I think we assumed, or at least I assumed, were just going to be straight up Burgertron and... Uh, and Spud Muffin, again, since they were prominent characters in the show. I mean, this one has a bit of a different color scheme, but this guy really is just like, it's just like a new Spud Muffin. But he's not actually Spud Muffin. This guy's name is Dud Spud, which is still pretty similar to Spud Muffin. Uh, this guy is Vegitron. Is that right? Vegitron? Got I've got the boxes right next to me. Yes, Vegitron. So he's a, a veggie burger, I suppose. Not a hamburger. So not Burgertron, but Vegitron. Um, okay, what's this guy's name? This guy is Grease Drip. Um, these two are, they each come, each set comes with one of these. This is the new sort of uh, chase figure kind of idea in Bot Bot Series 6, rather than the, uh, the gold ones that we've been doing for the past few series. Now it's sort of these like, you know, gasoline type color schemes where they're black and then they'll have this like sort of pearlescent metallic uh, paint over it, which is kind of a neat look. I do find it a little bit more interesting than the just straight up gold. Um, 
paint jobs, but generally, just like with a lot of these Chase figures, I just generally prefer the regular color schemes for these objects. So I'm not a huge fan of these, but yes, this is Grease Strip. Uh, and then this one, who actually was a character in the show, is Ulf the Orange, which um, unfortunately in my set is missing a pretty significant part uh, because this one, how are you supposed to transform it? Is uh, It's got this big panel on the side of it that has like a, a little Triceratops image of one of the Triceratops bot bots and then you're supposed to plug that into the face and it creates a little juice box um, and my set just didn't come with that part at all so I can't really transform off the orange and put her in her uh, juice box mode properly <laughs> which sucks uh, I tried to you know sort it out by contacting uh, Hasbro because that was Amazon's recommendation and they said they didn't do replacement parts, but uh, that they would send me a courtesy item, which actually arrived earlier today, and um, was a pack of Series 5 bot bots, which I actually didn't have a number of. So at least I was able to get a few more Series 5 bot bots out of it. But does suck that uh, that I can't really complete Ulf here. Um, I might eventually have to just unfortunately send back the whole thing and then get it replaced by Amazon because even though they're two separate sets and I'm only missing one tiny little part from one of the four bot bots that comes with one of the two sets uh, because it was all in the same sort of you know product in Amazon, if I want to get a replacement, I probably have to send the whole thing back, which will be kind of a pain. I, I'm going to wait a little bit to see if uh, if I can find some series, other Series 6 bot bots in store and just confirm whether or not this one is actually exclusive to this set. Because if I can just get another set that has a, another version of this bot bot and does have the panel, then I'm not going to bother, you know, replacing the whole, like the whole two sets or anything like that. But if this one is exclusive to this set, then I might as well, like it would be a pain, but I, you know, it would just take some time to get the part that I actually need. But yeah, that, that kind of sucks that it didn't come with a, a huge part of this bot bot here, but eh, what can you do? Uh, and then this seat side here, we've got, uh, this guy whose name is, I think it's just Pew Pew. Yeah. Pew Pew Pew. Sorry. <laughs> and, uh, he's fun because he's kind of got a, um, unlike a lot of bot bots that don't tend to have like hugely referential things to the actual Transformers toy line. This guy has uh, quite a bit. I mean, his uh, his chest detailing here is very clearly reminiscent of uh, of G1 Megatron, and then his face is uh, is Kremzeek here, um, and he also turns into a, uh, a little gun that kind of looks like Megatron, so that's pretty cool. Um, and then we've got this guy here, whose name is uh, Snuzzlebeard. Uh, he's pretty fun. He's one of these sort of Dungeons and Dragons referential ones. And then speaking of that, we also have this guy here. Uh, his name is uh, Player the Handbook. He's another D&D &D reference one because he turns into a little uh, D D book there and then last but not least we have uh this guy here whose name is steer d wrong so you know typical kind of bot bots names of just being sort of whatever um but yeah this guy is a uh, a repaint of old cool who is uh, one of the arcade renegades um so you can see them there them, them together there uh this guy the little D, D book guy is a repaint of jet setter who previously turned into a passport um which i, I think this works better as a book <laughs> than a passport just because it's too thick to really be a passport but it looks good as a book i think uh these two are new molds this guy is obviously a repaint of uh of spud muffin but Pretty similar, honestly, Spud Muffin. I mean, with him, I think it looks a little bit better that they did this in white plastic and painted it kind of this orangey yellow versus casting it in yellow, just because pure cast yellow plastic tends to eat detail a little bit. So I think it looks a little bit better like that. But otherwise, pretty pretty similar there. I do think that they wanted him to be pretty similar to Spud Muffin since, uh, you know, to kind of cash in on the, uh, the show recognizability. Um, Obviously, this guy is a repaint of Sup Dog, again from Series 1, the uh, the corn dog guy. And then last but not least, we've got Vegitron as a repaint of Burger Tron. And, uh, you know, they all transform pretty simply. Again, I'll do my own reviews of them individually, where I, you know, kind of go through the, uh, the transformations more step by step. But, you know, just to kind of show what, off what they look like in their other modes, except for... Uh, except for Ulf here, unfortunately. Um, also, what's weird about her is that, um, 
you know how like on juice boxes right you have a straw that you just poke into the top and the straw goes into a hole and you know how we've got bot bots who have accessories sometimes and usually they just use it by pegging in a little bit to a hole so you know how like if you had a juice box bot bot that to attach the straw you should just poke it into a hole on the top yeah, so they've added, they've actually added a little clip on the back here that you attach the straw with, uh, and it sits like that. That's baffling to me. <laughs> why 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 would they? Like, I get it. You know, if you don't want it to scratch off the paint that's on the straw, because I think it is painted, uh, it would be. You know, you could just make the hole on the top like really loose, and then have kind of a tight section at the bottom of it, so that you could actually plug the straw in a significant am amount. Um, maybe there's some joints that get in the way of that working, but I even feel like just having a hole to peg right at the top and just have a really extended straw would have been okay as well. I just cannot really understand why the decision was made to uh, <laughs> to just have the straw attached in juice box mode by clipping onto the back. I think that's kind of dumb but whatever and again you know i don't have the panel to actually complete the juice box but meh. uh and then this one you know pretty pretty simple there this one also has a little accessory which you know if we could lose the giant plate i'm a little bit concerned that some packs might lose the little stick or lose the accessory that comes with him but he's really really cute in his little wizard stuffy mode uh, and then we got the little little Kremzik guy. I'm always, he's pew, pew, pew. I'm always going to forget his name in favor of just calling him Kremzik, but makes for a little blaster mode here that, again, weirdly, like, you're supposed to peg in the blast effect like this between the two leg sections, which you can kind of do and it stays okay, but, like, it does not take a lot to fall out because the peg is made by these two sections on ball joints that are just kind of sandwiching together. So, uh, yeah, that's not really the way I would have chosen to do that, but whatever. Uh, <laughs> and then these two guys are just, you know, what we've seen before with, uh, with their respective original molds here. And again, you know, I, I think that uh, especially with the D&D book guy, I think it works better as a book than a passport because it's got its two little bookmarks there. And then we've got the nice kind of Dungeons and, Dungeons and Dragons-esque detail on the front there. I think that works. So yeah, they look all right in their alt modes. Um, but yeah, let's get on to the main event itself after talking about these guys for a while. Let's look at the actual uh, racers here. Um, well, I guess we'll start off with the uh, the pizza slice. And uh, yeah, it looks pretty good in pizza mode. They're a little bit like, I don't know, cheap feel feeling and kind of hollow. They don't really feel like overly quality products if i'm being honest like they've got some nice molded detail they do some neat things but just a lot of the i don't know the lot of the feel of them feels not really up to snuff for like how quality bot bots usually are but yeah to turn this into its a uh, racer mode basically you want to kind of extend out well you want to fold them out and then also extend out the little pepperoni pieces because when they're just attached like this they're on this joint where they don't actually rotate super well so if you pull them out that kind of actually loosens them up as wheels and on this side it technically i think you're supposed to fold down these little you know, French fry seats and then fold this on so that the uh, the little joint there plugs into it. But it's not really necessary and it's kind of hard to get it actually properly plugged in sometimes. So I usually don't bother. I usually just fold them up like that because it works just as well. And then unfortunately, this was, I don't know why this was so disappointing to me, but this piece, you just parts form it. And I just don't get why that decision was made because like you you unclip it from there you fold out this section and then you take this little peg and you plug it into uh, to this section here. And this section, which is kind of neat, is on a little slider so you can adjust the, uh, you know, the position of this. But if that's on a slider and we could have it go over to here, then why wasn't that just a hinge instead of a plug, you know, a plug? Because then you could actually, you know, fold it like that and then hinge it up. Just make it a double hinge. I don't know. That, uh, I was pretty disappointed that that was a parts form bit, but eh whatever. So yeah, here we have uh, the pizza car and it's little pizza car mode, the uh, raceroni. And, uh, you know, it's all right. Um, it looks a little bit awkward with the wheels kind of like super widely splayed out like that. It, it rolls okay. It kind of does tend to drag against the ground a little bit, but you know, I, I think that works pretty well. But 
if you're just wanting it like as a display piece on the shelf and you don't care about it actually functionally rolling, I think it looks a little bit better, like having the wheels actually compressed up like this. I just think like proportionally as a little vehicle that looks better, but obviously it can't really roll like that because those joints are pretty tight. So, eh, you know whatever um he also he it uh, <laughs> also has this little uh, little anchovy cannon which i mean i they stopped doing spring-loaded stuff a while ago on transformers so i don't know why i was so surprised by this but i was again kind of disappointed that that's not actually like a feature like it's sculpted in there but you can't do anything with it i thought maybe there would be like a little launcher or something but no it's it's just sculpted in there so eh uh, you got a couple of places where guys can sit here. I guess I'll have to transform them back here real quick. So we can take a couple of these guys and uh, and put them in the seats here. And I think, especially with the two of them, I think that looks pretty good. They sit in there quite nicely. They don't really have a lot of room to really like fall around. Uh, unfortunately, there's not really like a ton of space to put the other guys. Like you could kind of put them in the, the front section here. I mean, you can with him at least. Like you, you can kind of do that. You could have Ulf kind of hang out on the back here there's like spots you could put them but these are really the only two sort of like designated areas for for bot bots to go which is you know which is fine i don't think that there needs to be four bot bots on it i think it looks well enough with just having two or three of them on there but yeah you know that's a that's pretty much it for the pizza car there's not really a whole lot else in terms of features or anything is pretty much just what you see is what you get uh, i think that like the pizza mode in general it looks i don't know i mean i get why it is this way because like obviously they need the wheels to all be the same size and be you know symmetrical in terms of where they're placed on the car but it looks a little bit strange i think to have you know a pizza slice that has a very sort of regular layout of the uh, the pepperoni here of uh, being just like oh yeah two big pieces there two little pieces here you know that that's kind of a nitpick because again i get that it had to have wheels and <laughs> that was the way to do it but it does look a little bit strangely regular for a piece of pizza but eh, you know I, I think it works relatively well but again just like the feel of these is just kind of hollow and cheap I don't know. They don't feel like super high quality or anything. Uh, and then moving on over to the out of controller, I think it looks really nice in its little uh, little game controller mode. It is primarily made out of clear plastic, which is a little bit strange. But then again, you know, there are actual controllers that are <laughs> made out of clear plastic. But it's pretty much just like a regular sized, you know, like console controller. Like it fits well in your hand. Uh, and then this, this is the big issue that I have, at least with mine, is... Um, this piece just does not tab in or plug in in any meaningful way. So it just kind of droops down like that, which kind of sucks for an object that it feels nice to like pick up and you want to put your hands on the buttons, but then that droops down. Not a fan of that. Um, what's kind of cool about this also though, is that it does have little pressable buttons. I mean, obviously they don't do anything, but it's kind of nice. It's just like a little tactile object. Neither of the, uh, the joysticks move, but the buttons all press. I like the little bots buttons there um yeah just kind of a bummer that 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 piece doesn't stay uh tabbed in um but notionally it's supposed to because they even have this little section back here that kind of mimics the uh the little like wireless port thing or not port but you know what i mean the little wireless sensor and uh to actually push out this you're supposed to push in that to open the little drawer and get it started but on mine at least it, that's unnecessary <laughs> <laughs> so then you open up the drawer, you pull it out, you open up this flap, and then you take out the little cockpit and slide it out the rest of the way. Uh, you take the kind of bottom sections of the grip here and fold them out. Uh, you can fold them all the way back. I usually fold them out to about out there, uh, but eh, you know, whatever your preference is. And then there's these little panels right here that you just fold down so that you have the clearance to take these little cannons and rotate them around. I usually like to do it so that they can, uh, those are pretty much straight pointed forward is how I kind of adjust the wings to. And then uh, for the little joystick section up here, you just fold it up like that. And for this, I'm not sure if it's supposed to sit like this or if it's supposed to sit up like this in the actual controller mode. Um, doesn't make a huge difference just because like some game controllers do have that offset. So I think it's supposed to be down, but then there's a cutout for it up here. I don't know. It's weird. Either way, for the actual vehicle mode, you want it. So this little tab goes into that little slot right there. So it folds up to that point and then can fold up like that and lock into place. And then last but not least, you have these little, uh, 
tiny little winglets, which thankfully do lock into place, uh, that you flip up to make kind of tail wings there. And there you have a little out of controller jet. And I think that's pretty cool in terms of where you can put the bot bots. Um, we've got basically two little front sections up here, two little sections in the middle, and then these little stations, which I guess you could have as like gunner stations in the middle there. They also have like these little, uh, little sculpted controls on each of them. And, you know, even on the pizza car, there were little sculpted steering wheels, which actually do rotate, which is unnecessary, but kind of cool. Um, so yeah, kind of a, a little bit more actual functionality in terms of where you can put the bot bots on this one. Also, if you want it to sit flat, you can like kind of adjust that panel down so it, it can prop itself up a little bit more. But yeah, we could take, uh, take these guys, put them in there. They don't really seat in there quite as well because like the cavity isn't as deep as it was on uh on the uh the pizza car the uh slice around race or whatever it's called so you know they they don't quite sit in there quite as well but <laughs> there are more spaces for them so do that and then why don't we just oops he's supposed to be that way then why don't we just bring on a couple of the uh <laughs> the ones they were repainted of and we can put those in the uh the wings there and uh, again, you know, the functionality, like they, there's more stuff to do with them, but they don't actually sit in there as well. So I don't think it looks as good. So, eh, you know, <laughs> kind of ups and downs to each of them. And then the other thing that's kind of neat about, um, I don't, well, I don't know if it's that neat, but another feature that this one has, because this one for some reason just has more features than the, uh, the pizza slice here, is there's this little gray panel underneath that if you can, you can get your fingernail out of. And then on the back of the box, it kind of shows them, uh, shows one of them using this as like a little like snowboard alongside the, uh, the actual vehicle, which is kind of a neat idea. Uh, the only one that I've found that has any like peg holes on the bottom of his feet is, uh, is Snuzzlebeard here. And Unfortunately, the peg is actually just too big for the peg hole in his feet. Like, I got it in there once, but um, it felt like it was kind of stretching out the the leg there and 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 put some kind of like temporary stress marks on it. So, you can do that, but I don't think it's like particularly good for the toy uh, in terms of longevity because the peg is just too too big for those holes. So. I don't know. I don't know if it's really necessary, but it's kind of a neat idea to have this little extra accessory for them. But it's a little weird that, you know, this one has something like that, but the uh, the pizza car doesn't. So I don't know which one I really prefer, if I'm being honest. Like, I think in terms of the idea of them, I like the idea of a pizza car a lot more than a, uh, than a controller. I do think that the controller has a little bit more sort of like interesting features to it. Uh, although I think that the pizza car, just like in terms of how it actually interfaces with the bot bots, works a little bit better. Even though there are less seats, the seats that they sit in actually make them look good in the vehicle. Whereas with this one, there's really no like good way to actually peg them in. So eh, eh. I think that this one has a better controller mode than this one has a pizza mode. So I, in terms of which set you should get if you're only wanting to get one of them, it, it's kind of a toss-up. I mean, there is something to be said about the fact that with the uh, the pizza car, uh, only, uh, what is it, only one of the four figures that come with it is actually a new mold. The other three are all uh, repaints, um, whereas with the controller, two of the ones that come with it are new molds, and the uh, the other two are repaints, so you're getting a little bit more like new stuff with the controller, I guess, uh, in terms of like how the molds are in general. Cause you know, I recognize that like some people either might not care that they're repaints or might have not had the previous molds to begin with. Um, uh, you know, I, I don't think like, I think that the spud muffin mold is not a good one. So I don't think that's very good. Uh, Ulf seems good, although I don't like the way that the straw attaches. And again, with mine, I don't like that the front is missing and kind of ruins it. But eh. um, this is kind of an average mold. But again, I don't really prefer it in the uh, in the sort of metallic color scheme. And the Burgertron mold is good. So kind of a mixed bag there. And then with these guys, uh, I think that the two new guys are both okay. I think that 
probably out of the eight of them, this one is probably my favorite, but even him is, he's got his own issues as well. Uh, Snuzzlebeard, I think, I don't really like the robot mode that much, but the uh, the vehicle, or vehicle mode, the, <laughs> the alt mode is pretty cute. Um, this is a, a great mold. And again, you know, like if we're talking about whether or not you have the previous molds. This one was only previously part of an exclusive pack. Uh, I guess they did use this mold again in uh, in Series 5, but Series 5, and again with this one, who is also a remold of a Series 5 bot bot, had famously pretty poor distribution. So in terms of rarity, I think these two are probably more valuable molds in terms of your ease in being able to get them because like these three are all remold or repaints of series one bot bots, which were quite plentiful when they came out. So I would imagine they're probably easier to get a hold of. So I don't know. I think overall you're probably getting a slightly better value in terms of like new molds or molds that were hard to get before or, you know, interest to the actual, you know, vehicle that it comes with. I think this set is probably the one to go with, but it's really a matter of preference. They're both about the same. That's just kind of like, you know, <laughs> it's loosely beating them out but really is in terms of bot bots is all going to be coming down to a matter of preference uh in terms of comparisons i guess i'll quickly put them back in their uh their vehicle mode since the transformations are so quick here oh there we go just ripping off the wheel um that can happen because they are just clipped in but not a huge deal uh i do want to show them off with all right let's get these guys back do to do do to do Okay, should have done this when they were in their vehicle modes before, but, you know, what, whatever. Uh, here they are with Kingdom Sideswipe, just for that standard size comparison. And then here they are with a vehicle that I they really remind me of for some reason, with kind of the same energy <laughs> they are with the, uh, the Rock Lords vehicle that I have. Uh, in this mode, that really reminds me of like, yeah, this, this mode kind of fits with the, the pizza car. And then you <laughs> you transform this one. This vehicle mode kind of reminds me more of the uh, of the controller jet. So I don't know. It could be some inspiration there, just sort of like uh, supplementary sort of vehicle sets to kind of fit with your uh, your larger toy lines. It just reminds me of that. But yeah, uh, in terms of these sets overall, they're kind of a mixed bag. Like I said, they don't feel like super high quality. Um, the bot bots that come with them are honestly kind of a rocky start for series six like the repaints are the repaints so you know they're whatever but uh the two the uh the three new molds i'm not like super thrilled with like they're fine but none of them are like super out super outstanding excuse me i think like i said that uh that the little kremzy guy the pew 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 is probably my favorite of the three but even then, I don't know. I don't really like the way his blast effect stores in uh, in his alt mode. So, like I said, it's kind of a mixed bag here. Um, not a super duper strong start to Series 6. I don't like that they don't come with a, a guide for the other Series 6 bot bots. So, it's like I don't know what all the other ones are yet. I mean, I've seen seen images, but like, I'd like to actually get the checklist so you can, you know, get excited about the rest of the toy line. Um, the vehicles don't feel super fantastic. Like again, they're okay, but not great. So I don't, I don't know if I'd really go out of my way to get them just for that. What's really going to be telling for me is whether or not these eight, uh, eight, eight, uh, bot bots are actually exclusive to this set, or if they show up in other like individual sets or one packs, we don't really know right now. So that will be something we'll just have to wait and see. But as it is, yeah, you know, it's all right. And uh, I, I do feel kind of disappointed by it. But hopefully we can get a little bit more excited when more Series 6 stuff starts showing up. Uh, these were the only ones I had pre-ordered. So the rest I'll just have to find in stores. But for better or for worse, that that is the uh, the Raceroni and the Out of Controller. Um, but yeah, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to leave a like and consider subscribing. I do reviews every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday. And without further ado, here we have BotBots Series 6, Raceroni and Out of Controller.